Good afternoon. And county manager, can you turn on the camera and the audio, please? You got it. Perfect. Good afternoon. This is the Board of County Commissioners meeting. It is Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. It is 2.01 p.m. and I'm calling this meeting to order. We'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Commissioner Edwards. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands. One nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> with that, I'll go ahead and do introductions. I'm Carolina Mejia. I'm the chair of the board. Uh, Vice Chair Ty Manser, as well as Commissioner Edwards, joining me here at the podium. Uh, we have County Manager Ramiro Chavez, as well as Assistant County Manager uh, Robin Campbell joining us and as well as many staff members joining us via Zoom. Um, next, uh, Vice Chair Mensah, would you like to do a land acknowledgement? Yes, ma'am. We would also like to start today's meeting with the land acknowledgement. We would like to acknowledge and thank the Indigenous Salish peoples whose elders and ancestors have lived on and cared for the land and waterways of this county since time immemorial and who still inhabit the area today. Specifically, the Squaxin Island, Nisqually, and Chehalis people, our sovereign tribal partners. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of difference and heritage. The purpose of this acknowledgement is to disrupt ongoing erasure of injustices done and to remember history as a stepping stone towards healing. Thank you. Next is the approval of the Tuesday, June 21st, 2022 agenda. Is there a motion? I move to approve the proposed agenda for Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I would like to make a motion that we adjust the agenda for today by removing 5A and 6A from consideration by the board today. And uh, I, I'm going to try and make this very concise. The reason I'm making these recommendations of this motion is that there is question uh, brought forward whether or not we're on solid ground 100%. And the reason I bring this up on A is even uh, our internal auditor, uh, has made reference to Mr. Pettit that uh, this is in question and I'd like to have it clarified by before we move forward. And on uh, 6A, that's going to end up being around $83 million and I don't think that we're on solid footing there because the uh, bond folks are not contracted to the Thurston County uh, government as they normally would be. I know they've been utilized many times, but this uh, contract expired in December of 2021, and it was just probably through oversight, but it was not renewed. And uh, I think to make everything uh, as it should be, we need to go through an RFP process as laid out in the procurement policy uh, of Thurston County, which requires bids. And I might point out, I signed the original, or was involved in the original contract with the same folks, I believe in uh, 2018, and we went out for an RFP policy uh, a bid request and we got I think two bids and this outfit was one of them but we don't know today if there isn't another outfit that could give us a better deal so I'm just going to ask that they be removed and see where that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it but if any citizens are interested in the reasoning behind my request they could watch our meeting as of this morning in our agenda setting, we had a pretty good discussion. Might, might, some people might even find it interesting. Anyway, that's 
I won't go into uh, drag this out any further, but that is my concern, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So there's a motion from Commissioner Edwards to remove item uh, 5A and item 6A. Is there a second? Hearing none, we'll move on. Um, so there's an approval of the Tuesday, June 21st agenda. It's been seconded. Uh, with that, I'll call for the vote. Aye. Sorry, there we go. Commissioner Menser. Aye. Commissioner Edwards. Nay. All in favor. Okay. Motion passes. Next is the approval of the board meeting minutes from June 14th, 2022. I move to approve board meeting minutes from June 14th, 2022. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No, ma'am. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Mejia. Aye. Commissioner Menser. Aye. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. So passes. Motion passes. Next, we have a presentation. Uh, it's Thurston County 4-H Youth Market Animal Cell Presentation. Yeah, good afternoon. I think we have members of the public, and I may ask you to come to the podium, introduce yourselves. I believe we have a PowerPoint presentation, so we'll walk you through that. Um, Please introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you all for letting us be here today and give you this presentation. My name is Sawyer Hicks. And is this a slideshow? Okay. Thanks. All right. My name is Sawyer Hicks. I'm 17 years old and I attend Tumwater High School where I do cross country and track. And I'm also a Thurston County 4 H member and I show market steers and sell them at the Thurston County Market Animal Sale. My name's Harper Hicks. I'm 12 years old and I go to Bush Middle School. Um, I'm a sixth grader. I run cross country and track and I'm also the captain of my dance team. I'm raising my third 4-H market steer this year and I plan to show and sell him um, this year at the Thurston County Fair and Market Sale. The Thurston County Market Animal Sale is full of 4-H and FFA members that exhibit and sell their projects at the sale. 4-H and FFA provide a great opportunity to develop uh, future leaders for our community. They also give kids uh, experience with agriculture and they learn about, a lot about where our food comes from. And the sale and fair are a great, great way for them to learn these crucial lessons and gain support from the public through selling their animals. Here's a few pictures of these kids, these 4 and FFA members. These kids also market their uh, projects through letters and uh, uh, to the public, to local businesses and other members. We have a few letters of our own right here that we'd love to give to the commissioners and anyone else who would want one. So my sister will give those to you. And here's a press release of our... TCYMAS market sale. The market sale is a great, is a place where steers, pigs, lambs, goats, rabbits are all sold uh, for market. These kids raise these uh, animals all year and they practice great ways on how to raise these animals the right way. That's one of the things that the market sale uh, strives that these kids are raising their animals the right way. Here's an example of a market steer and the expenses that are required for the, uh, the 4-H member, FFA member, to bring their steer to the sale. It's surprisingly expensive. It can cost nearly $1,000 or over to, for their initial steer purchase as a calf. And then feed can cost another $1,000. And then equipment, health, care, add up more. And then it's nearly $3,000 for these 4-H members to get their market steer all the way to the sale. So it's important they're supported and have a large number of buyers available to buy their steer at the final market sale. The, um, for the... For what it provides to us, um, we get to engage in the public by educating them and exhibiting our animals. Uh, we provide a high quality consumable meat 
It teaches us responsibility, empathy, husbandry, and one of our goals at the end is to recruit new youth participation, which is definitely a goal that we meet almost every year. Uh, this year, there's 17 market steers, which is the biggest number since the 1990s. Um, some things we do after we sell our animal, we buy our new project, eventually save up for college or trade school, and return the com to the community. Um, a couple of years ago, I donated $500 to the Thurston County Food Bank, and this year I'm planning on donating to the Thurston County Joint Animal Services. Supporting the youth is a great way for the community to engage and help out developing these young leaders and um, young 4-H members. And it's tax deductible for anyone who supports. It's, uh, there's recognition for local businesses and such. They are recognized at the fair. High bidders, are their names are called out at the sale and fair on the market sale literature. And it's surprisingly simple to support. A common misconception is people think you have to be part of the sale beforehand and people kind of go away from going there to buy a market steer or any sort of project. But it's a great way to buy, I'm sure many people in this room use some sort of meat every day. And it's a great place to buy that quality product and you're still supporting the community at the same time. To, you can register, pre-register as a buyer at tcymas.org and you, um, it's a great way to become uh, educated and know about this sale beforehand. When buying an animal, there's two things that you can do. You can keep the animal and it'll be, go to the, um, it, it'll get processed and back to you, right, from the fair, back to your freezer. You can turn over an animal. This is a donation, basically, to the kid. You're supporting them. You buy the animal just as you normally would, but a commercial buyer buys it back from you at a set market price. So you're paying the difference between the sale price that you purchase it for and their market price. So it's a way to support youth. Here's some examples of the keep and turnover method. And there's an add-on card. This is a donation of any amount that goes directly to the exhibitor. Uh, and these add-on cards are available online. Beforehand, you can send them into the fair and you can also do it on sale day. By pre-registering as a buyer, you get uh, free entry to the fair and free parking on that day. The sale will take place July 30th at 6 p.m. the Hicks Lake Barn at the Thurston County Fairgrounds. The local businesses and community members make it possible for these members to continue to show off their projects and learn these valuable skills. What we want you guys to do is become educated on this. It's very important for these kids to have support. Otherwise, it's hard for them to keep doing the project year after year. And we thank all of you for letting us be here again, and we'll gladly take any questions. Thank you. Questions, comments? Commissioner Edwards, we'll start with you. I, I do have a couple of comments. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that one of your <clears throat> long-term, uh, long-time uh, supporters, Rick Nelson, uh, passed away, but he put a lot of time and effort into this um, market sale activity. So uh, I just want to encourage everybody out there to participate if you can. And the add-on process is a really good way if you really don't want to fill your freezer. So I'll put that plug in. And I just want to compliment you young folks because if you are an example of the young people we have coming up, we have got some great potential and leaders uh, coming up as, as you progress into your adulthood. Thank you very much for coming forward today. Uh, thank you very much. Commissioner Menser, comments, questions? Yeah, thank you. The, the questions that I had are actually answered on the handout. I was going to ask you, you were talking about steer, and, and I was going to ask what other animals, and it says here pigs, lambs, goats, rabbits, so that's cool. And the date and time of your event is July 30th at 6 p.m., and I imagine 
with, even if you're not a buyer, you can come observe. And For sure. It's a great place to take your family. The fair is a great experience. So, yeah, coming and checking out the sale is a great way to. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much. You did a great job. I uh, want to thank uh, Sawyer and Harper for reaching out and doing this presentation today. Um, it's definitely great to to see you know how active you are and um, this um, this uh, PowerPoint is great um, and you know it, it definitely if anyone's interested in, in purchasing right this is um, local food uh, there's a huge environmental impact that goes along with it and plus you're supporting these um, great youth members that are you know investing a lot of time and a lot of money, as we saw, uh, into this. So uh, thank you again uh, for, for coming here. Thank, thank you for you the handouts, much. too. Oh, you're welcome. Um, thank you. Have a great day. Do we want to get a picture of these young folks? Yeah, can we? Okay, next is an opportunity for the public to address the board. There are some guidelines for public comments. The Board of Thurston County Commissioners welcomes comments from the public. However, there are some guidelines governing such comments to ensure they are appropriate and do not take advantage of the fact that most meetings are televised. The general speaking guidelines are as follows. Please introduce yourself, including the address you reside in the county. Please address the board, not the audience or staff. Please silence your cell phones for those in the boardroom. The uh, speakers are limited to a total of four minutes to address the board. Meeting attendees cannot donate their speaking time to another person. No comments that are lewd and offensive, inflammatory, hateful, defamatory, or discriminatory in nature. Please be respectful. No outburst of any kind. No comments that are commercial in nature, such as promotion of a for-profit business. All materials provided to the county may be considered public records subject to public release upon request pursuant to the Public Records Act, Chapter 42.56 of the RCW. No remarks about pending land use permits or similar matters that could eventually come before the board on appeal and no electioneering. Thank you so much for your cooperation. I'll start off with uh, the list I have. If there's anyone who did not sign up, then uh, I will give an opportunity for those members to uh, provide public comment. And then after that, I will move to the Zoom. We'll start off with Doug Drake. Hi, my name is Doug Drake. Um, my address is 18710 Citrus, Rochester, Washington. I have a couple comments to make. Um, for one, I want to thank the board, the commissioners, the, the county uh, manager, and the people in the office. I did pr get a permit over the counter. We've worked really hard. You guys have worked really hard with me, and I appreciate all that. Um, I think more people should see this process, and instead of complaining about stuff and not dealing with it, they should come in here and talk to you guys and see and deal with it this way and, and maybe come out with a better outcome. And I appreciate all you guys' work. I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, Ron or Mr. Cummings and Mrs. Cooper and all you guys and people mainly in the office over there. I've asked a lot of questions. There is some things that uh, when it comes to a pool, it's about a pool permit, um, but there's some more criteria that's going to be worked on, I think, make things a little bit more streamlined and a little easier to get over the counter. 
but I did get mine, and I just want to say thank you all for, for uh, helping me get along with it. I know that they were working on it at the time, but me talking sort of helped things move along, and I just want to say thank you. So. Next, I have John Pettit. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is John Pettit. I live at 9725 Rich Road, Southeast Olympia. So there's a number of items that are on your agenda today. And I saw just kind of ring out a topic or a special number, and we'll start out with that. 83,269,618.75. That's the amount that two of the members of this count, this board believes that the public doesn't have a right to vote about. They don't think the citizens are smart enough to decide what they should be using their taxes for. And I would attribute that apparently to Mr. Menzer and Ms. Mejia for that decision. I thought you guys wanted to support voters' rights. This is anything but. You're supposed to be representing the people, not out here ruling over them or playing your special political privilege of wanting to do facilities that uh, are on your own personal political agendas. Now, one of the things which I guess I'm going to ask you is, is, are you ready to sign a fraudulent document? The resolution for the bond would have on the end of it a bond council signature. Anybody representing themselves as bond council at this point is doing so fraudulently. You don't have a bond council right now. The contract expired. So therefore, anything you sign that has that, you are signing and joining in an act of fraud. It's shameful. It's ridiculous. Then you want to attribute the idea that you're going to pay for all this with REIT funds, just strictly from the unincorporated area. You know, I sent you a whole bunch of email here, but I don't even think you even know what you're doing any close. You know, we all, we all are familiar right now. I know we've talked about this. Your sales tax forecast for this last year is right now about $2 million below what the actual amount that was forecasted. So you're low on that. Did you know during this last budget cycle, you went from a figure of only getting less than $3 million a year in revenue for REIT to a figure of estimating at $5 million, more than $2 million up. That was to help justify using REIT funds for paying a bond. Now, the trouble here is, is that you don't even have enough money based upon the bond figures. You wouldn't even have enough money coming in to make the payments on that. You've been lied to. Now, one of the things I presented to you was the fact that in order to make a payment from REIT, the state law requires that it must be used solely for financing capital projects specified in the capital facilities plan. You have a CIP. The trouble is your CIP doesn't have any provision for making a payment. It has to be on a project. You can't just make payments out of it for non-project purposes. And as far as you should take a look, what are the projects? Well, if you actually look at your CIP, you'll see that each project has its designated fund source. This $50 million amount is not designated to come out of REIT. It's designated to come out of a bond. The bond has to be financed out of general fund. Now, I don't want you to make a mistake. You'd be better off to make sure you're corrected. But ultimately, if you take action going forward, that's your choice. It's my choice to take you to court to make you stop. But it's so sad to know that you're willing to participate in an illegal act in order to win your own political agenda. Thank you. Next is your microphone. Next is Margaret Tudor. Thank you, Commissioners. I really appreciate being here, and I appreciate 
the fact that later, at a, under 8A, you'll be looking at the resolution of intention to establish Patterson Lake Management District. And uh, for us who live on the lake as stewards, we, we are the stewards of that lake. We feel it's very important to address the health of the lake as one of many, several lakes, before uh, in the Henderson Inlet watershed. Uh, we want to work with the public work scientists. You have incredible scientists who've made a difference to other lakes in the past years. And we want to keep our lake healthy. We are experiencing higher, um, more uh, toxic algae outbreaks. And so we want to keep our pets and our young people and ourselves healthy because that is a, is a toxin that has great effect. Uh, we appreciate the science that has been used in the past to warn us of these toxic outbreaks, but we'd like to prevent them in the future. Uh, if we are able to move forward on this Patterson Lake Management District, we'll be taxing ourselves, and most, uh, we've had a very high signature rate. Most of our lake residents are very um, appreciative of this, this potential moving forward of our resolution. And uh, they, look, they are happy to tax themselves to really keep that lake healthy for the population that's coming into Thurston County now. There's more developments going around Thurston County, more people are accessing the lake. And with actually, uh, the other c concern is weeds. With more weeds, we have, have potential for people to be, uh, actually have this boater safety issues. In Hicks Lake, they had one lo life lost in, uh, as a result of the weeds. That's my presentation for now, and I do thank you for your consideration for the Patterson Lake Management District. Next, I have Jane Applin. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, do you need name and address? Sorry. To be out, please. Uh, my name's Jane Appling. I live at 7452 Fair Oaks Road Southeast on the banks of beautiful Patterson Lake. So I am here also, uh, like Margaret, to, uh, to uh, urge you to support today the resolution of intention to establish the Patterson Lake Management District and to set a, hear a public hearing date for that as soon as possible. Um, on a day like today, I'm pretty sure that most of us would rather be at the lake than here in the, in the board meeting room, but we're here because it's very important. Um, our lakes in Thurston County are a tremendous public resource for the county. They are enjoyed by thousands of people every year for swimming, for boating, for fishing, for kayaking, for bird watching. As our area grows, and we live in a very stressful time now, um, our, our lake especially, uh, it's a low speed lake, uh, it's a quiet and serene place where people can come to recharge their spirits. It's open and accessible to all. We see it being used by many, many different kinds of people and uh, welcome them there and, and want to be able to, to support and steward that lake, uh, as Margaret has said, to protect it so it's there for many years uh, to be used in that way. Um, our lakes are changing very fast, though. Patterson Lake, uh, I've lived, I've owned property on the lake for 12, for 12 uh, years and have lived there full time for the past three years. Even in that short time, it's changed dramatically. Um, we have a lot of problems with invasive species and we have definitely seen more, uh, more frequent and more serious toxic algae blooms on the lake. We are, have been concerned, we and many of our neighbors, um, we spent about two years now educating ourselves about how lakes work, uh, how our lake works, how it's connected to, to others and what may be changing in the environment. Every lake is different. Um, I especially want to thank uh, Tim Wilson and Paula Cracknell of your staff. They have been extraordinary uh, resources for us, have been very patient, um, thorough, unfailingly objective um, in educating us about about the lake and about the ways that we might best support and enhance the efforts of the county to protect this uh, this valuable natural resource. So, um, yeah, we really, really appreciate them, uh, especially Paula has spent a lot of time with us. And uh, we, we understand that sometimes volunteers and citizen activism can take more time than it seems worth, but uh, we try to respect their time and we value their knowledge and insight very much. Um, so with that, uh, 
you know, we invite you to come out to Patterson Lake and enjoy it. We hope today that you will move ahead and, and pass the resolution of intent uh, to form the Lake Management District so that we can begin as soon as possible now to, um, to really uh, do some more serious scientific study of the lake and to assess what kinds of things we may be able to do to best uh, safely and respecting natural balance um, to protect and preserve the quality of that lake. Um, so we hope that you'll pass that resolution today. Thank you very much. That's everyone I have for the boardroom. Is there anyone else who's present that would like to provide public comment today? Going once, twice. Okay. Uh, County Manager, can you? Um, yes, I will be calling. The uh, members of the public that I see in my Zoom screen based on the order that I have uh, here. Um, first, I have Mr. Ross Robb. I'd like to provide testimony, sir. Uh, you're on mute. Sorry, you're still on mute. Okay, unmute. There it is. It okay, just there you came go. You, you have four minutes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, uh, my name is Ross Robb. I live at 5508 Addison Lake Drive, southeast in Lacey here. And I and my family have lived here for 49 years uh, when um, the row of houses along our shoreline were cabins from the old Mullen Resort. And uh, we settled here and built a house and uh, have enjoyed the lake all these years. Uh, along with um, Margaret and Jane, I have to say the lake has uh, gone through a lot of changes. We did have a Addison Lake Management District before and it cleaned up the lake. Uh, but I think that was in the 80s. Um, I'll tell you that um, the last three years, it's been increasingly worse with the algae blooms uh, the weeds down uh, either side of the railroad trestle, the Burlington Northern Railroad trestle have gotten clogged up worse and worse every year. And I too am concerned about uh, kayakers, uh, boaters. We used to have a lot of swimmers. It would just swim across the lake here because we had the five mile an hour speed limit and it was safe to do so. Um, but the lake is, is definitely getting more dangerous and less usable in the summer. So um, in short, I'd just like to urge you to pass the resolution of intent today and as soon as possible, get the public hearings going so we can get started on the, the studies that will be required. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, as a point of clarification for the members of the public who are here for the Patterson Lake, uh, the action for the board to uh, uh, consider passing a resolution of intent and setting the public hearing is next week, not today. So uh, that is on the agenda for next week. It's not on the agenda for today. Okay, thank you. I stand corrected. Thank you. Thank you. There's too many items in front of us. I stand corrected. Thank you. County Manager, do you want to call the, is there an uh, Yes. Next, I have Mr. Gregory Mo. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Um, an update on Flag Day. We had a very successful Flag Day last Tuesday. We had, I'd say, 60 or so people showed up. The weather held out. It was a little breezy, a little cool, but it wasn't raining. And uh, thank you to Commissioner Edwards for his speech. We appreciate his time, spending his time with us. And now a short real estate minute for you. Uh, you may recall back in early part of 2022, we had, an, I was reporting averages of around upper 200s to 300 active listings in all of Thurston County, single family. Today, as of about quarter to one o'clock, we had 469 active listings, single family residences. So inventory has increased. So has the number of pending sales. We currently have 622 pending sales. There's a constant churn in the market. We might get 40 or 50 listings in the 24 hour period. And then there's 
40 or 50 go under contract. So it's a constant churn, but we are slowly gaining, getting into positive territory on the, um, on the active listing side. And that's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, I have Mr. Ryan Deskins. Yes, thank you. Oh, go ahead. You must, you must be up, Maddie. Go ahead. You're up, Brian. Sorry, she signed in. Yeah, I'm Ryan Deskins. I reside at 19331 Old Highway 99 Southwest in Rochester, Washington. And I just want to address the, the board and try to find out where we were on the Grand Mound subplot area. Um, we've been waiting quite a while. We've heard a lot of talk and about things being priority and what was getting done. The big question is whether anyone's ever been assigned to it, if we have someone assigned to it. And this, this project kind of dates back a long, long time. But for us, really actively involved in it since 2017. I, I apologize. I, I can barely hear him. And yeah, your your connection is a little bit off. Can you speak up, please? Uh, is this related to the Grand Mound sub-area plan, sir? Yes, it is. It's related to the Grand Mound subplot area. Is that better? Yeah, a, a little bit. Um, is are you asking for the status of that particular item on the on the docket? I am. Okay. Can you hear me better now? Uh, barely, but go ahead. Uh, at, the end, at the end of your testimony, I'll, I will try to uh, summarize what I've heard, if I may. Is he there? No. It, Mr. Deskins? Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. We we have, we're talking about the Grand Mountain subplot, and we've been working on this for uh, quite some time. Uh, since 2017, and uh, it's been a, a constant, uh, you know, thing that's we're supposed to be here next year, next year, next year, next year, next year. That's all we hear every year that next year. And even in the documents that we received over the course of time, it said we'll have an answer for us on such and such date, dating, dating, dating back to the 2018, 19. And then of course, we had 20, we had the pandemic. And it's just been an ongoing situation where uh, it seems to be get pushed back further and further and further with no real action. Um, we, we've been watching the county commissioner meetings and stuff and listening to them. And I know that the board has said it's a priority, but it seems like nothing gets assigned. And, um, um, you know, we've been waiting a long, long time for an answer. I'm sorry if I'm hard to hear. I do not know why that's going on. I'm sorry. And, uh, um, uh, there's a speaker on this. I'm going to shut my video off. Talk right now. We've been waiting a long, long time for an answer. We're trying to find uh, a path to work with the county and not against the county and, and follow the rules. Um, I have spent countless hours trying to figure out what the actual procedure is so that we can have that day where we can be heard and, and actually have it come in front of the, the board. Um, but yet we've been unable to to unlock the mystery way to get there. So I, I'll just keep it short at that. We're just looking for an update on the county from the board on where we are in the Grand Mound subplot area and uh, any answers, any direction, and if you've assigned anyone to it and if we have a definite timeline. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Next, I have um, Ryan Deskins, but perhaps may not be. Ma'am, you'd like to provide testimony. Hello, my name is Maddie Barnes, and I live in the Grand Mount area of Rochester as well. Thanks for the opportunity to speak here today. I'm also seeking an update on the status of the Grand Mount sub-area plan for the Grand Mount urban growth area. It was determined at the March 10th, 2022 commission meeting that this was a priority item. I'm curious where are we at on this and specifically what is the process for moving forward? County officials continually express that they do not have the resources to accommodate these projects, which is what we are told is the cause of delay up until this point. So why not hire a private contractor? 
Thurston County can continue to control the process while applicants can help offset the cost through an increase in fees. In fact, applicants have repeatedly expressed their willingness to do this. Seems like a win-win. Thurston County continues to control the process while the private contractor does what they do best in the most efficient way possible. We've been researching this project, exhausting countless resources since the 1990s with an extensive report being published by Thurston County in 1997. An additional report was published by the Chehalis tribe in 2009 through a grant provided by Thurston County. All of these reports include public input and achieve the same results. The demand for expansion and growth here is real and it has been since the 90s. The people in our community have been asking for assistance in accommodating this growth for years. Current reality has far exceeded expectations with the 1997 report projecting a population of 833. The actual 2020 population, 3,301. We need to expand the UGA and Grand Mound. We need businesses small and large to expand in our area, providing great local jobs and vital revenue that the community desperately needs. We live in an area that's heavily occupied by the Chehalis tribe, of whom owns prime real estate in our community, yet they're exempt from paying property tax and fuel tax. We need to expand our tax base. We need that revenue for our schools, utilities, emergency services, and more. And the expansion of the UGA will help do this significantly. In conclusion, we need some sort of forward progress on this project, and we need it soon. There are people in our community who have literally been waiting nearly 20 years for a decision on this, with their entire livelihood depending on it. While the county has nothing but time and resources at their disposal, us local community members do not. In fact, the most valuable and vulnerable thing that we have is our time. We elect you, our county commissioners, and we trust you when you say that you are here for us, specifically us in rural areas in South Thurston County. Yet when you actually have an opportunity to truly make an impact in our lives, you drag our feet. And my question is why? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next, I have uh, Ms. Jane Paul. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, you have four minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, hearing from me today. I, my name is Jane Poole, and I live at 7639 Atchison Drive Southeast, and I am on the south side of Patterson Lake, and um, I just wanted to add my voice to the uh, voices that were ahead of me um, in asking for uh, movement on our Patterson Lake Management District. I've lived uh, here on the lake since 1994 with my family and enjoy kayaking and swimming and uh, time on the lake, canoeing and uh, walking around the lake and have seen a significant change as people have uh, detailed ahead of me um, in the amount of uh, growth of the algae, the blue-green algae. It seems like the, uh, the growth is happening sooner and longer blooms we're having. And that's been documented by regular testing that Thurston County Public Health does on the lake in the summertime. Um, additionally, the weed growth uh, has continued to uh, blossom and, and um, to really increase over time. So we're just asking that uh, the board consider that we uh, add our Patterson Lake Management District, that we get the county help that has been helpful so far, and that um, it is done in a timely manner so that we can get started on the scientific studies and learning what's actually happening in our lake as part of the lake systems in uh, Thurston County, um, and to do that as soon as possible. So thank you for your time. I appreciate uh, what you are working on doing for us and appreciate the help of the County staff, Paula Cracknell and um, Tim Wilson, as well as some others. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I have Ms. Uh, Nancy Jones. I'm only sitting in on for the prosecutor's office, Romero. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> uh, next, I have Ms. Celeste uh, Winther. like to provide testimony this afternoon. Let me move on. Uh, next, I have Mr. Jerry Durker. 
Hi, my name is Jerry Durker. My address is 2826 Cooper Point Road, Northwest, Olympia, Washington, 98502. I'm uh, uh, talking today about the uh, uh, a logging project on top of the highest hill in Olympia uh, in the Green Cove Creek Basin, just above my house, where they are planning on taking uh, uh, 20, 25 acres or so of timber, uh, old growth timber off the top of that hill that's uh, a, a environmentally sensitive area as part of the Green Cove Creek Basin area. Uh, and they're doing this without going through a SEPA process, without going through any environmental review, without consideration uh, of federal resources and public property like the, the city's park next door. And uh, they uh, uh, the uh, forester does not believe that uh, storm that rain water running off of it is considered contaminated storm water if it even if it silts up the stream and stuff. Uh, he believes that uh, and uh, and the uh, the attorney general for DNR believes that uh, the neither the county nor the city nor uh, nor anyone else. Can, can stop them from doing this. They can't, you can't even complain. They said that they don't have to consider the uh, Green Cove Creek Basin Plan, which was created by uh, federal, state, and local authorities, not just local authorities and stuff. And since this is an environmental preserve, uh, pardon me, an environmentally sensitive area and was designated as such by the, the federal, state, and state and local governments here, uh, uh, the exemption, any exemption from SEPA would not be a, a state environmental policy act determination would not be allowed. And they didn't even require an environmental checklist to be filed, let alone go through any of the process. They've also uh, failed to consider the the spot the spotted owls on the site, the marble mirrorlets on the site, the the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, salmon and other things on the site too. And uh, so uh, they they need to they need to take and consider those endangered species and things. This is a very serious problem here. And they're also going to have a slash burn here in Olympia, right on top of that hill on the west side of Olympia, where the it's the highest hill in Olympia. And uh, there's forest all around it that is full of uh, fuel for fires and uh, and stuff because it hasn't been logged in uh, or cleaned up in decades and uh, and so this uh, I'm sorry to say that they're going to have an uncontrolled fire up there that's uh, that where they have no fire suppression equipment no fire protection equipment and the uh, the uh, local fire chief has already said that they can't they don't have the equipment nor the training to do any forest fire kinds of things up there. So I'm afraid the city of Olympia is probably going to burn down because the, the predominant west uh, 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 winds that we have here are going to blow it all the way across the city and cause all of this. There's also a problem with the uh, landslide problems as happened on the uh, the uh, across across the creek and across the canyon from this site on the old on the old Cooper Crest site where there's a dozen homes or more right now sitting there that uh, nobody can live in because it's collapsing and there's landslides on the hill. So this is an environmentally sensitive area, landslide prone area. It has old growth timber and that was the it was the only grove of Thank old you. growth. Thank you, sir. Your time is up. Thank you. This is Esther Cronenberg. I'm on the same call. I signed up, but we signed up with the same email. So uh, go ahead. You have four minutes. OK, uh, thank you. Um, First of all, I wanted to let the commissioners know that the plan, the permit uh, that was granted for the developers in Tumwater to bring in contaminated soil from the Asarco plant, that we had a discussion with those, um, those developers and they have agreed to uh, put that aside and seek alternative um, a building uh, practice instead of bringing in the contaminated soil. So we were happy that happened that way and that everyone was cooperating for the, the well-being of, of the whole community. 
Um, I'm also call, uh, talking today about the same as uh, Mr. Jerker about this logging project that's on the Cooper Crest property. That's after we spent so much time getting the Green Cove uh, basin protected from the Sunbird mine and the runoff, the toxic runoff from that. Now we're faced with another project right across the street that's even closer to the creek uh, that plans to cut down pretty much all the trees there that are now old growth forest that are uh, right adjacent to the Cooper Crest open space that's in the city of Olympia Park. And that plans afterward to grow new trees there for 10 years using chemicals that will herbicides. and herbicides that will drain into the creek and also cause increased runoff and sedimentation into the creek that's going to mess up the all the eight million dollars you're going to spend downstream to build a, a fish culvert um and the, and, and the bridge right and um there's a high pressure aquifer under that hill. So it's very saturated soils. And the forester that I spoke to, Mr. Brady, uh, did acknowledge that that could be a problem. And, uh, you know, we have to, we, we will be appealing this decision. And um, we're hoping that the commissioners can add whatever authority they have, which we believe you do have under the Growth Management Act and under. Um, um, the, under SEPA and under the Green Cove Basin Plan uh, to make comment about it. Um, the Thurston County Comprehensive Plan establishes a policy for stormwater management. Uh, the Puget Sound Water Quality Authority also is there to protect the citizens and areas for and, and uh, the, the uh, surface waters of the state from damage and there's no question that this is going to make major damage to that area and it would really be a real shame to after having uh, spent all that time protecting the Green Cove Basin with this major study that was federally funded that we would allow one private landowner to come in and and destroy the whole um, the whole Green Cove Basin. So I'm uh, the the person in the logger does have to get a road permit. We're hoping that the county may be able to intervene on that level at least. Thirty seconds, man. And yeah, and prevent him from getting a road permit. In the meantime, a local conservation group is trying to buy the property so it can be conserved. But we would hope that the county can do something to delay it and perhaps prevent that. And thank you for your help. And you thank you. Right thing. Uh, could you please mute your uh, feet? Thank you. I believe that concludes public testimony, Madam Chair. Okay. Is there anyone that we missed on Zoom that would like to provide public testimony? Okay. So that would conclude our public testimony. Uh, then we'll move to county manager's update. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I'd like to uh, ad address the uh, comments today from uh, uh, Mr. Deskins as well as Ms. Barnes. Um, I know for a fact this, uh, this sub-area plan um, is, has been uh, indicated as a priority for the county as, as stated today, and that project has already been assigned to a planner. Uh, next week, I will provide uh, with uh, additional status report as to when in terms of the expectations of the timing, when may I go to the planning commission and when could probably come to the board uh, for consideration. So I will work with the staff to provide the status on that. Um, I'd like to follow up some uh, public testimony you received last week. And uh, along with what uh, Mrs. Cronenberg uh, stated today, it was related to a project located on 8114 Little Rock Road Southwest. The proposal of this, uh, uh, this site was uh, 62 lot subdivision, which are planning to develop by 9.9 .9 acres. Within the context of, of this plan, they were planning to do a grading contract. 
uh, in that grading uh, was including uh, in the SEPA, the, that's the State Environmental Protection Act checklist, which included the import of 18,000 cubic yards of material. And I, think, I believe that was the source of the comments you received uh, from, uh, uh, from Ms. Kornberg uh, last week, as well as the Board of Health from uh, uh, Mr. Cullen, uh, from Mr. Murphy. So uh, it was a statement made that perhaps it was uh, importing uh, contaminated material from the ASARCO plan, that it was uh, at one point operating within the flats uh, of Tacoma. Uh, that's not necessarily the case, but uh, uh, the ASARCO plan operated for so many years, they created a contaminated soils, they included this plum, plume. The, uh, the limits of this plume got into the areas, portions of Thurston County, which has been identified as as potential contaminants of uh, arsenic and lead. Through the uh, uh, CEPA process, the Department of Ecology is the one who governs the, uh, what we call is the Model Toxic Cleanup Act, also known as the MATCA plan. And they govern by asking any applicant, their plan to take uh, soils from this particular area of the plume and use it for any other uh, means uh, to submit a uh, uh, cleanup action plan. So that report by the applicant was submitted by the Department of Ecology. Uh, the Ecology review the, uh, the, uh, this uh, report by the consultant and determined that perhaps it was no further action determined. In their statement from the Department of Ecology related to this application, they said, I stated after reviewing the final cleanup report, the Department of Ecology concluded that the final concentrations of arsenic and lead on the uh, trestle wood property are below the MATCA cleanup levels of arsenic, of arsenic and lead. And as such, can be exported to another site because the plan was to take from this area uh, of the plume uh, into uh, the Little Rock site. That was the gist of, uh, of, of the comments. Um, as I was going in the process this morning, I reported to the board uh, that I needed to do additional um, research related to uh, this particular process. However, as Mrs. Connenberg reported, uh, the applicant withdrew the application for the grading plan. And that was the gist of the SIPA process. Uh, the applicant, I believe, is not withdrawing the project itself. I believe the, the applicant is going to be resubmitting uh, the, uh, the proposal with a different alternative uh, related to this particular grading plan. So, um, any questions? Questions? Comments? <clears throat> okay. And that's all I have for you for today. Thank you. Okay, moving on to consent items or item, there's only one. Um, is there a motion? I move to approve consent item 3A. Second. So moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Menser? Aye. Commissioner Mejia? Aye. Next, moving on to department items, items 4A from the auditor's office, approval of the voucher list. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your consideration is uh, uh, approving the voucher list for the week of May 30, 2022, for a combined amount of $5,151,808.58. Under normal circumstances, uh, this uh, item is in your consent agenda, uh, but Commissioner Edwards has asked staff to bring this as a department item for you to exercise your individual votes when uh, you have an item related to the 3,000 Pacific uh, expenditures. So on this voucher, on page 76, you have uh, $1,270,153.16 associated with the tenant improvements at the 3,000 Pacific. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, no, ma'am. No. Okay, I'm ready for a motion. I move to approve the voucher list for the week of May 30th, 2022 for a combined amount of $5,151,808.58. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? 
Call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards? Nay. Commissioner Mejia? Aye. Commissioner Mincer? Next is uh, item five from Central Services. Item 5A, contract award for atrium furniture, fixtures, and equipment. And is... I, be I believe we'll have Chris Helmer presenting the item here. Chris? Sorry for the delay. My name is Chris Helmer. I'm a capital project manager with Central Services. And this is a request for authorization to award a contract to Gordon Products Incorporated, otherwise known as Creative Office, in the amount of up to $2,025,558 for the atrium project furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and authorize the assistant county manager to execute the contract and any future amendments that do not exceed 10%. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, yes. Commissioner Edwards? Uh, and I don't know if Chris will have the answer or maybe Ron, but what fund is this coming out of for this purchase? I've got that. Is that on? Yes, on. Thank you. Um, so uh, Robin Campbell, Assistant County Manager, and we intend to use REIT1 to purchase the furniture. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? Okay, I'm ready for a motion. Move to award a contract to Gordon Products Inc. Creative Office in the amount of up to two million twenty-five thousand five hundred fifty-eight dollars for furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and authorize the assistant county manager to execute the contract and any future amendments that do not exceed 10%. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Commissioner Edwards. Uh, the next two items I have concerns over, but I'll, I'll get those in due course. Uh, I would like to point out that REIT 1 is a tax generated in the unincorporated area of Thurston County when a home sells or a property sells. And it's very much like the sales tax in the unincorporated area. It's not a tax against the incorporated area. And in this case, the citizens from the unincorporated area end up carrying the burden mainly because the incorporated citizens do not have to participate. So I think that is a fairness issue and a trust issue because this courthouse, act, uh, even though it's an administrative location, if you will, for administrative offices, they are utilized by every member of Thurston County, those that live in the incorporated area and the unincorporated area. And I think that's commonly used, uh, referred to as a user issue when that takes place. So I've got that concern, whether or not REIT is a valid fund to use here. And I might point out that uh, I had a conversation with Mr. Pettit about material that he sent in and he said he talked to Darren Bennett, our internal auditor, and that he also had concerns. Now, I don't know what those concerns are, and I haven't had an opportunity to talk to him. But I do not see a need that this needs to be pushed through. And consequently, uh, I am opposed to this moving forward. I did make a, a motion earlier to have this removed from the agenda, but that was not successful. So. I'm not going to belittle this. Uh, folks that can follow the concern here can look at our work session from this morning during agenda setting. Any further, dis Any further discussion? I'll just make a few points. Okay. Um, this morning, external counsel confirmed that there was no legal issue. County manager provided a email from internal counsel who confirmed that pointing at actually a change in the law that occurred many years ago 
specifically addressing uh, a, a lack of clarity on this point and including um, this type of expenditure within REIT 1. And as far as unincorporated residents, the this is REIT 1 is not a tax on unincorporated residents. It's a it's a it's something that's generated by real estate transactions. And it's a specifically dedicated funding source for facilities. And the county by state law has an obligation to provide county offices within the county seat, which is Olympia. So there's really no way you would not have that connection between the real estate transactions and at least expenditure of some of them on facilities within the county seat because that's state law. So it's really not an argument that I think has any merit whatsoever. So, and I have no concern about that piece of it. That's the structure of the law. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards. Nay. Commissioner Menser. Aye. Commissioner Mejia. Aye. Next, from the Commissioner's Office, item 6A, bond resolution for acquisition and remodeling of various county buildings. Thank you, Commissioner. Robin Campbell, Assistant County Manager. Uh, this afternoon, I am requesting that the board approve a resolution to delegate authority to issue uh, general county debt, also known as bonds. It's the normal practice of Thurston County to delegate authority uh, to the assistant county manager to issue times or to issue bonds at a time that is most advantageous to the county. Uh, the bonds in question are limited general obligation bonds. Uh, as you heard at your work session this morning, um, for at least the last 40 years, this is the type of bond that uh, Thurston County has issued and it is the normal practice of counties uh, in the state of Washington, uh, if not across the nation, to issue uh, limited general obligation bonds under a council manic action. Uh, the parameters are set in the resolution. Uh, the bond issue would be for a maximum of $52 million, maximum interest rate of 5.5%, no longer than 25 years, and the funds would be used for uh, acquisition of buildings, a remodel of buildings and capital improvements in county buildings uh, as approved by the Board of County Commissioners. This action has the recommendation of the Thirsty County Finance Committee. Uh, our, our county debt policy requires that the Finance Committee take action and the chair is here with us this afternoon, Treasurer Jeff Gadman. Uh, and um, just to address a few additional things, our bond council is designated by Thurston County Prosecutor John Thunheim, um, and that designation does not come with an expiration date. Um, so the signature on the resolution is valid. Uh, REIT revenue, as Commissioner Mincer stated, um, is generated through real estate transactions. I would just say that um, in 2021, there were 12,717 real estate transactions. That was all. And uh, that generated $5,024,684 last year. Um, so very few transactions that generate a lot of REIT money. And through May of 2022, um, the county had collected $2 million. Um, our forecasted revenue this year is just over $5 million. Uh, we forecasted a little less than last year. And the um, highest months of REIT revenue are generally in um, July, August, and September, so yet to come. And we are on pace to achieve that uh, revenue. Uh, general obligation, as you heard from council this morning, uh, the board can commit uh, REIT funding to pay for the bonds, but should we not have sufficient REIT, you do um, commit to pay from the general fund. That is part of 
the practice. And uh, finally, this project is on the county uh, capital improvement plan. Um, so we've um, ticked all the boxes, if you will. And I would be happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Thank you. Treasurer Jeff Gadman, um, is there any additional information that you would like to provide? Good afternoon. Thank you, Jeff Gadman, County Treasurer. Thank you for your time. I just want to add, so the Finance Committee in their review process does have the Bond Advisor and Bond Council in the room. Uh, they are there to answer any concerns um, or, or questions that the Finance Committee may have. We had none, and so we did pass unanimously to recommend to you to adopt this. Could, could you state who is the Finance Committee? Uh, Certainly. Uh, so I am the chair of the Finance Committee by statute. The County Auditor, Mary Hall, is the vice chair of the committee by statute. And then the chair of the County Legislative Authority, in this case, Commissioner Mejia, is a member. I was not at that meeting, just, just to clear the record. Well, just to clarify who makes the, the Finance Committee. Thank you. Okay. Um, with that, any questions from the commissioners, Commissioner Edwards? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, do we have a contract with Bond Council? This time, I believe that the, our contract with Bond Council has expired, but that contract has a, a clause that says it may be extended, uh, and we generally do so. So uh, that will be upcoming, but that contract has absolutely nothing to do with the motion in front of you at this time. Okay. Uh, in 2018, the county put out an RFP for a bid on a contract that I believe uh, bond council was successful in obtaining, and I, I don't know the name of the people. But, uh, is that right? Uh, our bond council is Foster Garvey, and yes, they were the successful bidder. And when they got that contract, the contract said that it would expire in December of 2021, and as far as I know, that did expire. Yes, with options to renew. But we never renewed it during the time frame leading up to the expiration. So I think what it is is a legal issue and a technicality more than anything else. But sometimes those issues get you in trouble in court. And so I feel that we should have a valid contract like the one we put in place in 2018 that is now expired. Now, I realize it's an oversight and it's an inconvenience, but when we do things that are inconvenient, uh, it doesn't mean we just set that aside. So on this whole thing, I make no bones about it. I don't think this is good expenditure of tax dollars. That's my opinion. It is a democratic process here, I will say. But in 17, we went to the state legislature and asked the legislature to change the law so that we could do a levy, a levy lid lift that would normally have expired after nine years, and they changed it just for Thurston County. Only Thurston County got that benefit for a 25-year change recognizing that we were the capital county and maybe had lesser revenue than some of the other counties. Anyway, they made that law change and we only need to come up with 50% of the voters. It's not like a school bond where they need to come up with a super majority of 60%. If we put this out to the voters, we could do the project and do it right. The difference is that by doing it right, we would have to submit a plan to the voters. With this proposal as a councilmatic proposal and authorized just by the sitting board, uh, county commission board, we don't have to come up with a detailed, discussed plan. 
we've got what we call plan B that's, boy, it's a lot over here and over here. There's really, it's, it's not down in writing what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how everything is going to take place. In other words, it's, we're from the government, trust us, and we're going to do the right thing. Well, that's never panned out very well in Thurston County. Uh, we had something similar to that in about 2007, in which the county went out to build a new $100 million jail. Sir. So we're getting short here. Am I hearing or, or we're limited on what we can say? Well, no, sir. I, I'm just going to remind that we had very ample discussion that I let on for a long time this morning. So okay. um, if you could start wrapping it up, I would appreciate I it. I will start wrapping it up, ma'am. Uh, recognizing time constraints, anybody that has any interest in this topic, I didn't get to cover all these points, but if you watch our work session from this morning during agenda session, you can pick up on those. And they are uh, taped and available on YouTube if you would care to see those discussions. Anyway. This is $83 million that I don't think we need to spend at this point in time because it's not a good plan. It's a mediocre plan at best. But I would hope that we could rethink this and end up with a situation and the legislature went to a lot of trouble to change the law for Thurston County. A 50% vote is not that hard to do. We just need to let the voters know what the plan is and make sure it's a good plan. So I'll uh, forego any further comments, ma'am. Any further questions or comments? I would just say that on one point, an attorney-client relationship is formed by objective circumstances, regardless of the existence of a written contract. When an attorney-client uh, relationship is formed, then rules of professional conduct kicked in, and attorneys have have ethical duties of competent um, representation, duty of loyalty to the person to whom they're giving um, advice and fiduciary responsibility. So I can have confidence, regardless of the status of this contract extension, I can have full confidence in the advice we got this morning, which was incidentally our bond counsel for the last 25 years. So um, all of that together gives me good confidence in the advice that we got on these important issues. I'm ready for a motion. I move to approve the resolution providing for the issuance, sale, and delivery of not to exceed $52 million aggregate principal amount of limited tax general obligation bonds necessary to finance a portion of acquisition and remodeling of various county building, buildings, including heating, ventilation, air conditioning, roof, window, and lighting improvements, and other capital improvements, and authorize the assistant county manager as the designated representative to approve final terms. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Commissioner Edwards. I will try not to carry this out too long, ma'am. Uh, just a few things I'd like to finish that we are going into a recession. Uh, our financial folks have pointed out that we had 12,000 REIT transactions. This, uh, I think that was in 2021. And uh, things were looking pretty good. I don't think we're going to have near that many transactions. Uh, building uh, starts are down something like 15% now. Uh, we can see a recession coming. I don't think it's a very good time to depend on REIT. When we will recover from that, I'm not exactly sure. But I would like to make sure that the public knows that REIT funds are very much like a sales tax. They're not just a tax on the unincorporated citizens. They are a tax generated the same as sales tax is a generated in the unincorporated area. So it could be a citizen uh, from King County that moves down here and he ends up paying the sales tax. He ends up paying the REIT tax, the same thing. So it's a misconception to think that this is not a burden on the unincorporated citizens. And the reason it's a burden is the full cost has to be contributed by the unincorporated citizens 
and the incorporated citizens do not participate. And that becomes a fairness issue. So about one half of the taxpayers in Thurston County pay the full load if we move forward on this expenditure. So that's uh, my concern, and I'll, I'll let it go at that unless I get some rebuttal later or something. We'll see. Thank you. Any further discussion? I would like to uh, tell the public there was a very lengthy bond presentation this morning, and it's available on the agenda setting YouTube. It starts at uh, one hour and 59 minutes for those who would like to view it. Uh, it was very informational, and it really broke it down on what we're doing here. Um, it answered a lot of the questions that we've heard here today. Uh, they went into great detail. Um, so I would encourage anyone uh, to, who has questions about this bond to really um, view this presentation. Um, with that, I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards? Nay. Commissioner Mejia? Aye. Commissioner Mincer? Aye. Next, Public Health and Social Services, Item 7A, Professional Services Contract between Thurston County and Thurston County Food Bank. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Gretchen Toller. I'm the Maternal Child Health and Nurse Family Partnership Division Director with Thurston County Public Health and Social Services. I am seeking approval of a Thurston County Professional Services contract with the Thurston County Food Bank for the amount of $130,000 for the period of June 21st, 2022 through December 31st of 2022. This Thurston County funding will provide $100,000 for formula and $30,000 for diapers to the Thurston County Food Bank. The formula and diapers will be distributed through all of the Thurston County Food Bank satellite sites to ensure access to these items throughout the county. And I'm just seeking approval to move this contract forward. Thank you, Gretchen. Questions, comments? Uh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead, sir. Gretchen, do you have a mechanism in place to try and slow down the black market sale of uh, baby formula when it becomes available? Um, yes, in regards to our partnership with the food bank, Commissioner Edwards, we what we put in the contract was that um, each child within a family would be eligible for a certain number of cans of formula per week so that somebody couldn't go and um, get formula that wasn't needed for their fam family and you know try to sell it or something. So we've tried to put some parameters in place that was a good compromise so people could get what they needed, but it wasn't too much that it would, somebody could abuse it. Okay, I'd, I'd just uh, bring this up because we've had reports that baby formula has been being sold on the inter internet for a heck of a price. And uh, that's yeah. taking advantage of folks. And so I'm glad you're on top of that. Thank you very much, Gretchen. Yes, thank you so much. Any further questions or comments? I'd just like to thank Gretchen and Commissioner Mejia for bringing this idea forward. Um, best I could tell, they brought this to the forefront and I think Commissioner Edwards and I are very happy to support it. And uh, thank you. I think this will do a lot of good for a lot of families in our county. Thank you. I, yeah, I would like to extend my thank yous really to Gretchen um, and also to Christina who is here. She joined us at that partners meeting where we had lengthy discussions on bringing a, forward a proposal to the commissioners. And thank you, Commissioner Menser. Thank you, Commissioner Edwards for uh, really, um, you know, giving me the resources to be able to, to push this forward. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, so with that, I'm ready for a motion. I move to approve a waiver for competitive bidding in accordance with RCW 3904-2801C under emergency declaration resolution 15907 and award a contract to the Thurston County Food Bank for the purchase and distribution of infant formula and diapers in the amount of $130,000. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? No, Commissioner Mejia, can I just add, I'm sorry, I should have said this before. Yes. Um, just by rough calculations, 
I am thinking this should provide um, at least 3,500 cans of formula and around 660 boxes of diapers. And that's that's with the average cost of formula. I'm hoping that we will be able to get a good deal and it will be even more. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No, ma'am. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Mincer? Aye. Commissioner Mejia? Aye. Put this on our toes, Katie. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, next is item 7B, contract with Interfaith Works for right-of-way shelter beds. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Keely Marino with Public Health and Social Services, the Homeless uh, Response Program Manager. Um, today, I am seeking uh, approval to move forward with a contract with Interfaith Works for um, $3,396,000 um, for three years to provide up to 24 beds for ho houseless individuals who are currently residing in the Department of Transportation right-of-ways and who will be removed from those um, right-of-ways in the upcoming months. Um, this is in response to the governor's uh, proviso to clear the right-of-ways in five priority counties. Um, and I bring this to you today for approval. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? Commissioner Edwards? Uh, no, again, I'd point out that we've had a lot of discussion on this, including this morning at our work session. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, Commissioner Menser? No, a lot of discussion on this one, yep. Okay, I'm ready for a motion. I move to approve a contract with Interfaith Works for up to $3,396,000 for three years to provide up to 24 shelter beds for persons living in Department of Transportation rights of way in Thurston County utilizing funding under the right-of-way initiative interagency agreement between the Washington State Department of Commerce and Thurston County and authorize the county manager to sign the agreement and any amendments that do not change the amount by more than 10%. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I have one point. Here. Go ahead, sir. It's just something I brought up this morning. I just like to, this reads like we're spending a lot of money, but in fact, we're using state money to displace local dollars, which will then, um, those local dollars can be available to do other projects or, or amplify other projects. So it's kind of almost the exact reverse of how it reads. And because of the state stepping up with these resources and prioritizing these rights of way, it'll help us um, stretch our local housing dollars further. So pretty excited about that. <laughs> okay, I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Commissioner Menser? Aye. Commissioner Mejia? Aye. Next, item 7C, request for proposals for outreach and hotel leasing for unsheltered households living in Department of Transportation right of, rights away. Thank you, commissioners. Um, I am today coming to you to also seek approval for um, to move to authorize this request for proposals for um, our office to receive those proposals to provide outreach in the right-of-way encampments over the next three years. Um, up to $300,000 for three years will be offered um, for that contract. And then subsequent to that, also a $200,000 contract for hoteling, hotel vouchers for those who are fleeing, actively fleeing domestic violence who are also living within the right-of-ways. This is also in response to the governor's proviso. Um, and I'm here to answer any questions beyond that. Questions, Commissioner Edwards? Uh, no questions, thank you. Commissioner Menser? No. Okay, I'm ready for a motion. I move to authorize a request for proposals for the Thurston County Office of Housing and Homeless Prevention to receive proposals from agencies to provide outreach and hotel leasing to unsheltered households living in Department of Transportation rights of way. Is there a second? <laughs> it's removed and seconded. Any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Menser? Aye. Commissioner Mejia? Aye. Next items are from Public Works. Item 8A, resolution of intention to establish Pattison Lake Management District number 23 and set a public hearing. Tim? Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, Tim Wilson, Water Resources Manager with Public Works. 
And staff is here today uh, to request that the board consider passing a resolution of intention to establish Patterson Lake Management District number 23 and set a public hearing regarding the proposed district. Patterson Lake residents have petitioned for formation of a county supported lake management district that met the requirements of RCW 3661, which establishes county's authority to establish LMDs and requires that at least 20% of the affected district acreage landowners sign a petition for consideration. The legal process for formation of a proposed LMD includes four major steps, and the entire process requires eight separate board actions. The board is asked to take action on step one, to pass a resolution of intention to establish an LMD, and step two, to set a public hearing to hear community objections. RCW 3661-030 requires the date for the public hearing shall be at least 30 days and no more than 90 days after the adoption of the resolution of intention, unless an emergency exists. RCW 3661 requires the board prior to passing a resolution of intention, and again, prior to authorizing a community vote to consider whether the formation of the proposed LMD appears to be both in the public interest to create the LMD and the financing of the LMD maintenance activities are feasible. The criteria for making the considerations was discussed in detail at a board briefing held on April 20th, 2022. The resolution of intention serves several functions. It speaks to the statutory validity of the petition. It outlines what an LMD and how it is managed and it outlines the general purpose of the proposed district, uh, the proposed rate and the duration of the LMD. If formed, an LMD creates a county managed program directed by public works and supported by a county managed advisory committee who provide input and information to public works on short and long-term management strategies. The county maintains staff who serve as technical experts regarding lake management activities. Thurston County LMDs are subject to all county adopted policies and procedures and are required to align work plans to complement and support all board adopted programs. Further, any LMD formed by the county will operate under the Thurston County Lake Management District administrative rules, which outline the relationship, roles, and responsibilities of the county and communities partnering under an LMD structure and help ensure work plans and lake management efforts remain in the public interest. If formed, management of the Patterson LMD would require an additional half of a full-time equivalent county employee depending on components of the work plan. The purpose of the proposed LMD as stated in the petition received by Thurston County is to protect the water quality, fish and wildlife, recreation, and aesthetic values of Patterson Lake through the implementation of appropriate lake management programs. The Patterson Lake Management District is proposed for 10 years beginning, beginning on January 1, 2023 and sunsetting on December 31, 2032. Per the petition, annual rates and charges will be used to raise funds to support the activities and the estimated amount raised in rates and charges would be $134,912. Upon adoption by the board of the resolution of intention, staff would post to the county's Healthy Lakes website, the petition received from the Patterson Lake community, the proposed boundary with affected parcels uh, parcel information with the proposed charges, the resolution of intention that was passed, and any other information needed to inform the Patterson Lake community in advance of the public hearing and eventual uh, 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 vote of the LMD. And per RCW, the county is also required to mail the notice of public hearing to all affected property owners uh, and the Departments of Fish and Wildlife, Department of Natural Resources, and Department of Ecology. So with that, staff is recommending the board move to approve the resolution of intention to establish Patterson Lake Management District number 23. And staff is also recommending that the board move to set a public hearing for July 26, 2022, um, to hear objections to the formation of proposed Patterson Lake Management District number 23. And I would answer any questions the board may have. Questions? 
Commissioner Edwards. Uh, Jim, is there any additional information on the district number 22 or 23? District number 23 as listed in our motions. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Uh, additional information regarding the proposed what, what, what does district management district number 23, what is that referring to? That is the proposed Patterson Lake Management District that the community has petitioned that the board form. Are you asking about the numbering? Y yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you addressed that this morning, Tim, about the numbering of. Uh, the numbering of the issue. 23. What's number one or what's number 24? Uh, what yeah, does so, the number 23 denote? So the, uh, the numbering is related to the board taking action to form or um, reform uh, any lake management district. So as discussed in agenda setting this morning, our two active uh, LMDs right now, Long Lake and Lake Lawrence, are number 21 and 22 because they were the most recent versions of our LMDs. So they're sequenced. So Patterson, uh, if, if, um, if formed, would be number 23. And the next uh, petition that comes forth fourth would be number 24. Okay, one follow-up. Uh, you made reference to, as we move forward on Patterson Lake, Patterson Lake that uh, they have to abide by rules, something about the lake. Who, who put those rules together? Where did those rules come from? The LMDs uh, LMD administrative rules uh, were developed by Public Works. Uh, they were uh, developed partly at the request uh, of commissioners at our April 26 agenda setting meeting that followed our April 20th briefing uh, to the board uh, and, and partly addressed the question of roles and responsibilities for the LMDs. Um, the Administrative rules uh, were rolled out to the petitioning communities of Patterson and Offutt Lakes um, at a recorded Zoom meeting that is online and uh, uh, then further rolled out to the Long and, and Lawrence communities on June 1st in a similar meeting. And did those organizations have input into the rules? Uh, no, they were developed by Public Works to to address uh, the need for roles and responsibilities based on uh, long history and and lessons learned working with the communities in order to provide a more uh, effective and successful relationship with the communities. Okay, thank you. Questions, Commissioner Munzer? No. Okay, I'm ready for a motion. I move to approve the resolution of intention to establish Patterson Lake Management District number 23 and move to set a public hearing for July 26th, 2022 at 3 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter may be heard at the Thurston County Courthouse Building 1, Room 280 to hear objections to the formation of proposed Patterson Lake Management District number 23. And I have a question before I proceed that motion. Tim, it says, is that from the statute? Can people come and provide support, or is it only a hearing to hear objections? Yes, Commissioner, that is, that is from statute, um, although the, the board, as, as you're aware, can hear comments and support as well. Okay, well, I'll leave it phrased as, as, as I laid it out. That's my motion. Okay, is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Commissioner Messer. Um, I just want to say there's folks from Patterson here and in the middle of working out wrinkles, I will say, with our existing lake management districts and our special district, your, your request came in. And um, so I was a little hesitant to jump into new relationships of that nature when we were in the middle of working out um, issues with the current uh, uh, or you know groups. But I met with the Lake Management District community leaders, Paula and Mike, 
I explained my concerns at great length. They expressed their concerns at great length. I felt we had a good understanding, and they heard me, and I heard them. And I left the meeting feeling confident that Patterson Lake community would work with the county cooperatively and productively on this project. So I'm, I'm wholeheartedly in support at this point after that process, and I apologize that it took a little longer. I know this is a long process to form, so I've asked that we expedite in any way we can. There's certain legal requirements that we have to follow, but um, I know there's been a delay that was no fault of the community, so if we can you know, move it forward, that'd be great. So I just wanted to, to lay that out. Thank you. Um, and I just want to clarify, because I will be abstaining from this vote, um, I still have a lot of questions. I have not had the opportunity to meet with uh, some of the petitioners, from, and I'll be meeting with them this week. I also have follow-up uh, meetings with, with different um, uh, staff members, uh, and it's just to answer my questions. I still have a lot of questions, and that's why I'm abstaining. I do not want to delay the process, so um, I felt that was the best way to um, address this. Uh, I have received many of your emails, um, both in support, and I've received some with uh, questions as well. So uh, just know that I, I have received them. I've read them through all of them, and um, just wanted to clarify um, my vote today. Any other further discussion? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Mincer? Aye. Commissioner Mejia? Abstain. Next is item 8B, set a public hearing to consider updates to chapter 1507 of Thurston County Code, illicit discharge, detection, and elimination. Good afternoon, commissioners. Ryan Langen, Stormwater Operations Manager with Public Works. Uh, for your consideration this afternoon, uh, requesting that you set a public hearing to consider updates to chapter 1507 of Thurston County Code, illicit discharge, detection, and elimination. Uh, the 2019 to 2024 municipal stormwater permit issued by the Washington State Department of Ecology requires the county adopt a source control ordinance prior to August 1st of 2022. Staff reviewed and proposed changes to Thurston County Code Chapter 1507, which relate to illicit discharge detection and elimination and source control in unincorporated areas of Thurston County. Required and recommended code revisions include references to a source control program consistent with the requirements of the Western Washington Phase II Municipal Stormwater Permit, ability to require the application of source control best management practices for pollutant generating sources associated with existing land use and activities, updated terminology, sequencing, and definitions consistent with the permit and Thurston County's Drainage Design and Erosion Control Manual, update referenced county department names that have changed over the years, clarification of enforcement actions, including the addition of compliance agreement as a compliance pathway. The proposed code revisions reflect changes recommended by Public Works, community planning, economic development, and the prosecuting attorney's office. Internal and external outreach efforts on the proposed updates were robust and included the following postcard mailing to 42 properties that are potentially affected by the source control requirements, updates to the Public Works stormwater webpage, including the draft documents, a summary of the changes and online comment forms. On May 25th of 2022, the Board of County Commissioners briefing was held to inform the board of the proposed updates to Thurston County Code Chapter 1507 and next steps in the public engagement and adoption process. With that, staff is recommending that you move to set a public hearing for Tuesday, July 19th of 2022 at 3 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter may be heard at the Thurston County Courthouse Building 1, Room 280 to accept public comment on the proposed amendments to Chapter 1507 of the Thurston County Code relating to illicit discharge detection and elimination. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Commissioner Edwards? No questions. We've had a lot of discussion on this. Thank you. Commissioner Menser? No. I'm ready for a motion. Move to set a public hearing for Tuesday, July 19th, 2022, 
at 3 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter may be heard at the Thurston County Courthouse, Building 1, Room 280, to accept public comment on the proposed amendment to Chapter 1507 of the Thurston County Code relating to illicit discharge detection and elimination. Second. This one moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. Uh, call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Menser? Aye. Commissioner Mejia? Aye. Motion passes. Next, uh, from the Sheriff's Office, item 9A, is to set a public hearing to receive public comment on the ordinance to amend section 2.130.030, Public Records Index. Under Sheriff Brady. Hey, good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, Ray Brady, Under Sheriff with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, the request before you today is to set a, a public hearing for August 2nd of this year. Um, to propose uh, the public an opportunity to comment um, regarding a, a change to the county ordinance, county code, um, specific the public records index and cost for providing copies of public records. Um, earlier this year um, in January, uh, you graciously provided the sheriff's office with funding for body worn and in car cameras. Um, we are currently uh, in the process of getting um, all of that set up. Um, and a portion of that is uh, specific to the public um, disclosure PDR um, laws and our PDR section. Um, RCW 4256-240 is the specific RCW that governs um, uh, that uh, as far as public records. Um, it uh, outlines what um, can be charged um, um, to the public for those records um, and specifically um, who um, is also exempt from those charges of public records. Um, our office has worked closely with um, the prosecuting attorney's office um, in um, developing um, a costing model um, that we plan to use um, for um, providing um, th these redactions to these videos. And uh, so we uh, are requesting uh, the opportunity um, for the commission to set a public hearing on August 2nd um, to propose uh, an amended change to the county code. Thank you. Questions, Commissioner Edwards. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, would you kind of point out why the exceptional cost, like, you know, redactions and different things like that that uh, may play into this? Just so yeah, that's for the public, so they'll know why we're taking this action. Yeah, absolutely, Commissioner. So the law um, actually outlines um, all of the different costing um, mechanisms for um, documents, for um, you know, different, uh, different types of uh, media that, that is um, created, specifically as it relates to um, body-worn cameras. Um, it can be extremely time-consuming um, for staff um, to go through all of those different videos. There's a lot of information that those videos will capture um, that would be prohibited by law for us to share with the public. So um, certain victims, um, certain names, um, sensitive information, um, the inside of people's residences. Um, so the legislature really took a lot of steps to ensure people's right to privacy, um, which is a good thing. Um, but as such, um, they recognized that um, that was going to, um, you know, require a substantial amount of time for agencies um, to redact that. So it, it does set out um, some things um, in the law. Um, it, does, it outlines that we are allowed to um, charge for um, exact costs um, that, uh, that uh, are incurred by that, um, but also says that we are required to use um, you know, it, the most up-to-date software programs to try to um, expedite that redaction process. Um, and then the method that um, we are choosing to use in consultation with the prosecutor's office is that we will take um, the salary of the lowest um, earning employee in our public records section, and then our fee schedule will be established um, for anyone that works on the, redacting those records um, will be based on the lowest um, salary of the people in that unit. Thank you. 
questions, Commissioner Menser? No. Um, okay, I'm ready for a motion. I move to set a public hearing for August 2nd, 2022 at 3 p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter may be heard at the Thurston County Courthouse, Building 1, Room 280, to receive public comment on the ordinance to amend Section 2.130.030, Public Records Index and Costs for Providing Copies of Public Records of the Thurston County Code. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No, ma'am. I'll call for the vote. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Menser? Aye. Commissioner Mejia? Aye. Motion passes. Next is our standing items. Items 10A, commissioners will report on board work sessions and assign committee meetings, providing updates on actions taken as well as upcoming issues. Commissioner Edwards. Uh, presented at uh, Lacey's Flag Day, um, Emergency Services Council meeting, steady meeting, uh, and uh, Nisqually River Council Zoom. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Menser? Sure. Uh, covered three cities for the chair. Um, attended a behavioral health conference uh, for Wednesday, half days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, based on my role on the um, governing board of the Thurston Mason Behavioral Health Administrative Services Organization Board. Uh, met with the executive director of the Timberland Regional Library to discuss timber revenue. Met with um, uh, attended Juneteenth events, various community events all weekend. It was packed with stuff, plus Father's Day, so it was a very busy weekend, uh, and that included Nisqually Land Trust event. And that's my report. Thank you. I was on vacation last week, so I attended the Tuesday meeting uh, via Zoom, and I also attended the RHC executive meeting, um, and that will be happening this Wednesday, so we just set the agenda for, for tomorrow. Um, but I got back this weekend. I did attend several community events uh, related to Juneteenth, um, and then as well as the Nisqually Land Trust uh, Conservation Dinner. Okay, with that, the county manager will review the Board of County Commissioners schedule for the week of June 21st, 2022. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let me walk you through your combined schedule where at least two commissioners will be present. You will have individual uh, appointments on your individual calendars. Those will not be part of my report. Here in a, in a few minutes, uh, in a different Zoom, you will have your regular transportation benefit district meeting. Wednesday, June 22nd, 9 in the morning tomorrow, you will have a uh, briefing related to the human resources internal services rates, and that is just pre in preparation to the upcoming budget process. 10.30 tomorrow, Wednesday, June 22nd, you have a briefing related to the 2023-2028 Transportation Improvement uh, Program, new projects. And then you have been invited tomorrow at noon to participate on the racial equity luncheon. Thursday, June 23rd, 8 in the morning, you have a briefing related to the Central Services and Information Technology Internal Rates. Uh, 10 in the morning, June 23rd, you have your regular commercials check-in, and the agenda has been posted. Following 11.30 on June 23rd, you have a briefing at 11.30 related to the US-12 and Sergeant Road uh, project. Friday, June 24th, uh, you have a briefing at 9.30 in the morning related to the internal services rates uh, provided by financial services. And then you have been invited at 2 in the afternoon to participate in a uh, retirement party for uh, a um, uh, staff member at the treasurer's office. And it's going to be an open house from uh, 2 to 4, I believe, and it's going to be held here in Building 1, uh, first floor. Uh, moving on to next week, Monday, June 27, you have your standing meeting at noon of the Washington State Association of Counties Virtual Assembly. And on June 28th, uh, Tuesday, uh, you will convene here at 9 in the morning uh, to review your agenda setting, uh, as well as review the agenda for the afternoon board meeting at 2 o'clock. And I believe Commissioner uh, Menser is excused for the next two weeks, starting mon Monday, June 27th. That's all I have for you. Thank you. Okay, uh, that leads to our last item to adjourn the meeting. It is 3.55. Uh, we will uh, start Transportation Benefit District in 10 minutes, so at 4.05. We're adjourned.